What kind of institution have you studied? Well, I started by looking at institutions in German-speaking Central Europe, and I looked specifically at some very interesting institutions which were rural guilds, guilds of rural weavers in the northern Black Forest. And then I became interested in other institutions like village communities, town communities. And finally, after the Berlin Wall came down, after the revolutions in Eastern Europe, I moved and started working on Czech history, and the final institution I looked at was serfdom in Eastern Central Europe. Mm -hmm. Is there any common factors uh, in all of them? I think the thing I learned as an economic historian and an economist was how important institutions were as part of the constraint structure facing ordinary people when they tried to earn their living. So I think the thing you notice is that guilds and community institutions and serfdom all change the structure of costs and prices and technology that ordinary poor people face when they try to earn a living. And in different ways, they change the way markets work. So as an economist, I learned that you have to look at these institutional rules if you want to understand how markets work. Mm -hmm. And in your opinion, what is the, the worst institution that we have to afford currently? Well, until I started working on Bohemian history after 1989, I thought that guilds were the worst institution that I had met because I noticed how they choked technological innovation, how they excluded women, how they distorted markets. But then I be became acquainted with serfdom in Eastern Central Europe, and I think I came to the conclusion in the course of the 1990s that serfdom was even worse for ordinary poor people than the guilds were in Western Europe. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you can answer the, the last question, as conclusion, uh, why the bad institutions uh, trains to survive? Well, as I'll be arguing in my lecture today, that's a puzzle which has faced economists for a long time. And economists initially thought, well, economic logic can explain why institutions survive. There must be something efficient about even the worst institutions. And um, economists have been sort of worrying at this, this puzzle for decades now. And I think there's an alternative answer which some of us are tending toward, which is that even bad institutions, institutions that are not efficient, can survive if they Uh, serve the interests of powerful groups in society. And so something I'm going to be talking about in today's lecture is how precisely that worked in European history in the past and what kind of policy lessons we can take from that for the present day. Okay, thank you. Thank you.